Hi everyone, on a previous video where I was looking at the consumption of the Ionic, I got a great question. How would you compare those stats with what you're getting on the EV database, but by season, cold versus summer? Right, so let's look into that today. And please keep going with the questions in the comments. If we split the data that we had between winter, December to February, mid-season, the six months in between winter and summer, and summer, which will be June to August. We get three curves for the consumption of the Ionic 28. First, the winter in blue is, of course, the one where you see the highest consumption, the lowest efficiency. In gold, you get the summer with the lowest consumption, the highest efficiency. And of course, Green is somewhat in between. Now, we are talking about UK and France, where the typical temperatures, high for the day, low for the day, are reported here. So, not really freezing temperatures normally in the winter and not super hot in the summer. Although that can be quite hot. We are going to the south of France and all of that. So, yes, it can be hot. Note that we have quite a bit of data for each of those seasons, so that's good enough. And each of those data points has at least 100 kilometers worth of data, if not typically 200 or 300 kilometers. One of the things we observe right off the bat is a bit of an outlier over here in the summer, where we managed to get it well below 100 watt hours per kilometer on a 50 kilometers per hour. So there seems to be a real good sweet spot. If you wanted to demonstrate the possibilities of this car, you would do it at about 50 kilometers an hour in the summer. If you look for records on the mileage for the Ionic 28, they're gonna be doing it at 50 kilometers an hour and around 25 degrees Celsius, 30 Celsius. So um, that matches completely uh, that particular experience. Now, let's look at the effect of the heat pump because the core of the Ionic 28 is it has this tiny battery but a fantastic heat pump that makes it quite efficient and therefore the difference between summer and winter is in fact not very drastic at all. At the higher speeds, it's hard to see the difference. The winter, 149 watt hours per kilometer, summer, 143 when you're above 80 kilometers an hour. Now, to be fair, at the higher speeds, at 110, 120, there seems to be something going on here. There is almost like a 20 watt hour per kilometer gap. But if you take everything in the round, well, there's not very much. Of course, what matters though is the more you push the car, the more you use the battery, and therefore the higher speeds is where it's gonna matter a bit more. But still, not a huge gap. And then, at the lower speed, so 30 to 70 kilometers an hour, you're looking at the difference between 116 watt hours per kilometer and 95. So that's about 21 watt hours per kilometer of difference. Now, the funny thing is, of course, the slower you go, the more you will see a difference between summer and winter. Why? Because simply on a per kilometer basis, even if you use similar amount of energy to heat up the cabin or in fact to cool it down, when you divide it by the number of kilometers in a given amount of time, you are going to find that of course that energy divided by kilometers is smaller. And that's exactly what we've got here. So in the round, what this curve says is pretty damn good this Ionic 28 in terms of efficiency in winter compared to the summer, super impressive. Now let's turn to the actual question we were asked, which was to compare EV database and the stats we reported. I've also included ABRP for good measure. And you can see, first of all, when we look at the summer, mild as it's called on EV database, which is 23 degrees Celsius, it's very, very similar. I get 160 watt hours per mile in the city in terms of the, the lower speeds, and I get it a 244 watt hours per mile on the highway. Now, that is pretty much the same on city, and it's just a tiny bit lower than EV database when looking at the higher speeds. If you compare it to ABRP, 
it's in fact a little bit higher, which is quite interesting because normally I would expect ABRP to be reasonably conservative because of course it's trying not to strand you. Let's look at the winter as well. In the winter, a bit different now because the winter for EV database is minus 10 degrees Celsius. I clearly don't have that for the stats I've shown you. It's typically not freezing temperatures. So I had to make an estimate, which is to accept that the gap is going to be twice as much between winter and summer compared to what I've observed. So this is already an estimate and not great at that. But if anything, that means that the actual consumptions I'm getting in the winter, in the cold, are probably better than what is estimated by both EV database and ABRP, which themselves are pretty consistent. So, in short, yep, yeah, EV database, ABRP, I think on these particular cars, they get it. I mean, they must have huge amounts of data, by the way, especially ABRP. But in, in the winter, actually, I'm getting to a better place, but probably because I don't really have the data for it. So take this left-hand side of the table with a pinch of salt. I think that's it for today. I hope that answered the question. Let me know in the comments if you've got more questions. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.